Hello everybody, Crit Crab here with another story, this one about a DM that took a bunch of fresh new players and showed them in every sense of the word that no D&D is much better than bad D&D, all the while blaming the players for not enjoying his story and then hiding behind every mental illness that can be named when confronted with reason, all from the comfort of a floating prison. Roll post. My first ever D&D experience was a game set among friends. It was mostly new players, but it was implied to me that the DM was experienced and knew the setting well. Because I was new, I missed a bunch of immediate red flags. We were playing 3.5 Eberron with literally every expansion and addition allowed. In fact, the DM was disappointed when his entirely new group of players all chose to play fairly simple archetypes instead of somehow magically knowing how to make exploitative and game-breaking combos by comboing multiple versions together that were clearly not written with compatibility in mind. Nonetheless, we were all excited. I was a changeling sorcerer posing as an elf with an existing relationship with another party member, our fighter. We also had a rogue, bard, and ranger. The players were all keen and ready. Since it is relevant, both the rogue player and myself are female. Everyone else, including the DM, is male. There was no session zero. The first session was literally to be, we are all meeting at a tavern to sign up for the same job. No motivations, no real plot hook, but also I heard a lot of games started out like this, so, eh. Unfortunately, I had to miss this session at the last second thanks to work, and when I asked how it was, I got mixed reports. Fighter friend reported that he'd signed us up for the job as agreed and then said that the ranger player had arrived drunk and spent most of the session being incoherent or picking fights. This included an infamous moment where he insisted that he could use his swim skill to dance on the floor. I'd sort of had my hopes up for a grand adventure story, but it seemed like the vibe of the group was going in a sillier direction. Okay, no worries, that could still be pretty fun. Then we got to the next session and some problems started to crystallize for me. The party swung by to pick up my character en route to our employer who had an airship. This airship would become the bane of our entire existence. It was magically enhanced to be impenetrable to basically everything, and filled to the brim with level 20 NPCs of unusual races and classes, all exploiting every weird nuance of 3.5 as much as possible to maximize their power. It was a literal boat full of DM NPCs, right down to his favorite self-insert. This wasn't a secret. The DM would gleefully brag about his OP class combo builds and how they were unbeatable. Meanwhile, we're on level 1 and immediately I'm seeing a problem with the story. Why are we being hired by these gods? I'm not super excited about a game that's basically running errands for people more powerful than us. But hey, the DM insists that he has a plan, so maybe this is all a front or something. Rogue players having her first session too, and both she and my sorcerer were skittish about the job for different reasons. DM then declared that our minds were being read by multiple characters on the ship, and refused to let us save, quote, too powerful lol. I objected to this. I objected to this, pointing out that my character had certain things she would want to keep private, and was basically told too bad. I felt like I had the option of being that player who makes things unnecessarily difficult by refusing to buy into the plot or swallowing my objections and hoping it got better. I chose the latter, which became a bad habit throughout this campaign for me. But DM was young and earnest, and I genuinely was hoping that somehow it would get all better. The session continued, DM NPCs flexing on us aggressively, making everyone in the party sign binding contracts that would basically insta-kill us if we ever tried to leave the airship without permission or tell anyone about our employment. When Sorcerer objected to this, I was told the fighter had signed up on her behalf and she was already employed. So shut up and stop asking questions. Rogue was similarly reluctant, but the DM basically rushed along saying, you all signed and we just move on. We're then given an objective. Go to a house and pick up something from the person there. Expect some trouble. The guy hasn't checked in recently. Okay, cool. A dungeon. Maybe this will be better. You've probably noticed by now I'm not filling in any plot elements. That's because there were basically none. The DM actively refused to world build for us. We would ask for descriptions and get maybe two words about the area we're in. Every character had one of two personalities, apathetic and bored, or sarcastic and mean. I'm not exaggerating at all. Whenever we pushed back on how boring the situation was, he would either send us fanfic about his DM NPCs, or complain we didn't read the Eberron guidebook from cover to cover and memorize all the details. All the while, he claimed to be an amazing storyteller. In this dungeon, more problems arose. It immediately became apparent that the dungeon was built like his DM NPCs, exploiting a bunch of 3.5 mechanics none of us were even remotely familiar with, and therefore filled with overpowered monsters that could all but one-shot our squishy level 1s. 
At the last second, one of the ship DM NPCs bursts through the roof and slaughters everything in one turn. I was praying at this point that this was all just an introductory session and that we'd face a reasonable challenge next week. Maybe? Surely? Haha, <laughs> nope. For the next few sessions, the pattern was the same. Throw our party at a challenge that wasn't even remotely scaled to our level, all but murder us, and then when the DM realized we were about to TPK, send in his level 20s to rescue us. This was incredibly demoralizing and unfun. Myself, Rogue Player, and Bard Player all started playing on our characters as frustrated and digging in their heels on these missions they were clearly unqualified to go on. Fighter Player was a sweetheart and didn't want to cause waves, so he played his character as more agreeable, if worried about sorcerer's safety. This upset the DM because we apparently were supposed to be all delighted at how cool and brave his NPCs were for saving us all the time. We tried to explain multiple times what we weren't enjoying, and it was like talking to a wall. He would nod, say he got it, and then literally do the same thing again. Then he got dismissive and even a bit jerkish that we'd keep bringing up this not having fun problem. Looking back on it, we should have quit. In fact, Ranger Player did quit, citing work obligations. Smart guy. So why didn't we? Well, we were all friends outside of the game and didn't want the bridge burned. The DM was young, 20, and had some mental health problems we were trying to tread carefully around too. Finally, we really liked our characters and we really wanted to love this game. The group was thirsty for a genuine story that we could dig our teeth into, and I think we all sort of believed that if we just held on long enough then somehow we'd get that. Anyway, eventually Rogue Player put her foot down and said that she didn't want to play in a game where she was a damsel in distress. She wanted to play a real adventure that was possible for us to complete. And because he had a very unsettled secret crush on her, suddenly he took it very seriously. He had no idea. Oh no, he'll fix that right away. Sigh. But okay, maybe we'll finally see something different. The next session started out the same. We were trapped on an airship surrounded by NPCs that could kill us with a flick of their pinky and treated us all like crap. And we were being told about some new mission to do. And then suddenly, we were attacked. Something ultra-powerful breached the defenses of the OP ship. We run to see what's attacking and see a single man basically slaughtering the entire ship. And okay, we obviously could not take that. But it felt more like a video game cutscene with the final boss than an encounter. And I was good with that. The man taunted us, refused to kill us for being literally too weak to be worth his time, and took off with a MacGuffin that they'd hidden on the ship, leaving us with one living NPC and the party on an airship surrounded by corpses. My mind was spinning with possibilities. We're the only people alive who know about the MacGuffin and its world-ending properties, and that this guy has it. We're not nearly powerful enough to stop him now, but maybe, if we go on a quest to uncover some sort of secret weapon to counter him, the Bard is a member of a family that gathers information, so maybe we could start there. It was like we'd finally lost our shackles and been given an actual adventure. And then, he describes the rogue's character abruptly awakening to a special power, and then describes her feeling a quote, overwhelming urge to go and touch all of the dead NPCs with her glowing hands. And when she doesn't do it fast enough for his liking, he just takes over and narrates her touching all of the dead people and them instantly healing and reviving until the whole ship is suddenly... alive again. So all the NPCs are alive again and we have no reason to step up and take responsibility for this situation at all. In fact, it's literally their problem. My sorcerer declares that this is way above her pay grade and she wants out. She demands to be fired. End of session. Before the next session, the DM sent me a whiny message complaining that my character wanting to quit was really messing up his plans. I told him quite bluntly that the only thing she had keeping her there was her fighter friend, and the massacre of an entire airship of OP NPCs right in front of her very much overrode that. I had tried and tried to be flexible about this, but the situation was ridiculous and no reasonable person would stick around after that without an amazing reason. She also does not trust the NPCs to not get her killed, and she doesn't trust that they can protect her now. It's on him as the DM to create reasons for her to stay, and no, threatening her was not a good reason to stay. Huge tool move on my part? Yes. I don't really regret it though. This ended the era of me being soft and gentle to the DM about his flaws. The next session started with the captain of the ship giving a big speech that the DM assured me would, quote, make my character feel better about feeling weak. 
the speech can basically be summed up as the speech can basically be summed up as we deliberately let him take the MacGuffin and murder us as part of our master plan. And we secretly knew that the rogue had magical revival powers all along and that Big Bad wouldn't swatter out of existence because of his arrogance. And now we have the upper hand. Yeah, so now Sorcerer thinks they're powerless to stop him and also complete morons. Luckily, I didn't voice this out loud. Anything you mentioned your character thinking was fair game for the multiple mind readers on the ship to pick up on and yell at you about. This is getting super long, so I'm going to summarize the next few atrocities. The airship at first seemed like it was going to be our hub world between missions of sorts. It very quickly became our prison. There were multiple times I can remember when a character in the party would be protesting an NPC or a mission or anything and the DM would smugly remind them that we are X amount of feet in the air and if they didn't like it, they could leave. Between this and the insta-kill magic contracts, we were basically forced to do whatever dumb errand the NPCs didn't feel like solving with their infinite powers that day. Any attempt to make a private space on the ship was fruitless. Our rooms didn't have locks, and hiding in some dark corner was impossible because of the unresistible mind readers. When the bard tried to use a spell to block his door, an NPC Kool-Aid man burst through the wall just to make a point. I wanted a spell that would let Sorcerer make a private pocket dimension, and the DM rejected it because pocket dimensions can't tether to relative objects. Okay, except that the airship already had pocket dimensions tethered to it. Three-fourths of the party members relied on magic in some way. The ship had anti-magic capabilities built into it, and it wasn't uncommon for them to force us into a room, activate the anti-magic so we couldn't use magic to leave, and then yell at us about how we were being disrespectful, lazy, awful, selfish, ungrateful, etc. Finally, we had no say over where the airship was going and why. This point would have mattered more if we could distinguish between any of the locations. Bard player found this the most irksome, since he wanted to check in with his family in a particular city, but the DM didn't want him to use his information gathering family background to gather information, so we were always conveniently anywhere but there. My character had not revealed she was a changeling and was constantly questioning the NPCs and picking holes in their plans. The DM got upset about this and outed her to the party via his self-insert NPC, also a changeling. So a very important character detail that I had been waiting to reveal in a cool way instead was taken from me because he wanted to punish me for not blindly going along with what he wanted. The group managed to salvage some really interesting inner party conflict out of the mess, but I was mad. He later insisted he didn't do it out of pettiness, but his precious and perfect NPC decided that the sorcerer keeping secrets was hurting the party, and he was doing her a favor by exposing her. From that point on, Sorcerer was openly and unapologetically hostile to that NPC, and he was always, always shocked that she despised him for outing her. He now couldn't deny he wasn't aware of the problems with the overleveled encounters in NPCs, especially as the party were refusing to cooperate in character. This meant we started playing the justification game. Why was this weak level 2 party being sent to missions that one level 20 NPC could manage in an hour? Well, you see, if the NPCs ever leave the ship, they're instantly attacked by horrifying monsters. What about all those other times the NPCs clearly left the ship to bail us out? Uh, ignore those, they don't count. Why is it our problem that they lost their MacGuffin in a storm of terrible planning? Reminder, the plan included all of them dying. Uh, because you should want to save the world. Okay, no, we would like to leave. Well, if you leave, you will be instantly murdered by a powerful cult that wants to kill the rogue because of her magic revival powers. But then how will we go out on missions? Oh no, the cult will only murder you if you leave when the DM NPCs don't want you to. So on and so forth. He couldn't admit that there was a problem with his lazy setup, and so just kept chaining us down more and more so we'd stay on the railroad. Rogue player was interested in becoming a lycanthrope. I am going to confess right now I have no idea how this is supposed to work in 3.5, except for that it instantly saw her gain 10 levels. Instead of, I don't know, worrying about balance, the DM instantly gifted this to her because of his crush. For the record, Rogue player wasn't aware of the crush and was incredibly uncomfortable once it became public. She was very much in love with someone else and oblivious to the nice guy act happening. So now the whole party is not only weaker than everyone on the ship, but also to their own party member because the DM thinks this will somehow get him in her pants. The overpowered and boring encounters continued. I can barely remember a distinct battle from this game because so many of them were. You were in a square room and there's an X number of mooks fight. 
Social encounters were similarly boring. Either the character would completely stonewall us because he didn't want us to try and go that way, or they would be petty, sarcastic, and mean. I also started to notice that all of the DM NPCs would abruptly become hostile at the same time if the DM was mad at the player. I took the brunt of this. My character was insulted for being angry at being outed, frightened at being nearly murdered on a mission, and betrayed when an NPC's complete and utter recklessness put her in danger. Her concerns were only valid if another party member backed her up. The only saving grace of these games was the party roleplay. I loved the connection between Fighter and my sorcerer. They were the de facto brother and sister and would have long conversations about the ship and their situation. She gained a close friend in the Rogue eventually, resulting from the Changeling reveal and Fallout, so the DM claimed credit for it. And I even had a friendly rivalry with the Bard, a nobody picks on him but me sort of thing. My happiest times in the game were building these relationships. Naturally, the DM insisted on forcing his NPCs into every single conversation we had. If the party had an in-joke, cute scene, or in-game competition, suddenly the NPCs would appear and try to co-opt it. One time, he literally forced his way into a heartfelt conversation between Sorcerer and Rogue to have his self-insert tell Rogue not to be afraid and that they were all her family now, and then gave her a ring of invisibility. The Sorcerer was literally shoved out of the scene until I pointed out I was still there, and got a half-hearted, uh, oh yeah, you too I guess. That was the first time the rogue player started to realize that she was getting special treatment. The bard died in one of the overpowered fights. Oh well, the rogue has a magical revival power, right? No. The DM suddenly said it didn't work and demanded that we instead fork over all of our money for a resurrection scroll instead. He later proudly told us out of character that this was his solution to us accumulating too much wealth for our party level. He was the one who set our salary. He had this whole thing about the party members falling in love and having babies. This began with a silly gag about the bard and the rogue, and then was quickly taken too far by the DM. The bard had his memories modified at some point, and the DM told me he intended to push the relationship between the two by creating false memories because it would be funny. I told him that the rogue would not like that, and he dropped it. He also pressured me to have my character be more spontaneous with her shapeshifting. Many changelings in this world were... Some sort of prostitutes or worked in brothels, and my character was considered prudish for not having the same opinion of shapeshifting as his self-insert. He later demanded that the Warforged develop feelings for one of the NPCs and complained that the bard did not seduce enough. It got really old. The whole party eventually got sick of the imbalance and complained. So the DM took a three-week sulk break and then came back and announced a sudden time skip in which all of our characters would level from about 4 to 12. Apparently, we all accepted an apprenticeship under different ship NPCs, despite the entire party being indifferent to them at best. Okay, fine, whatever. Maybe he's better at designing encounters for a mid-level party. Haha, <laughs> nope. He just wanted an excuse to abuse higher level stuff like level 9 spells. The first encounter we had post-leveling was an underground square room that had no shadows. The rogue's build relied on shadows for her sneak attack, and she was super excited to use it and feel powerful for one. We faced a wizard with 10 times the normal amount of hit points who trounced us until an NPC stepped in. Sigh. The rogue pretty much thinks that this encounter was designed to put her in her place for being excited about being powerful. Not even she is allowed to be more powerful than the mighty DM NPCs. The fighter player wanted his character to have a bit of a cool backstory as a wandering warrior who vanished when he joined my sorcerer while she was young. The DM agreed to this, and then never brought it up once. He wasn't asking for much, just a unique rumor and maybe the occasional NPC recognizing him as a fighter who had once saved them from bandits or something. The DM never once utilized this. All of the warforged on the ship were cooler and stronger than him, and nobody gave him the time of day because he was the, quote, dumb fighter. This kind of broke the player's heart, and frankly, he was the one trying the hardest to make the game work. He went along with the NPCs, suspended his disbelief so hard that I'm surprised it didn't hurt, and encouraged our characters to help out when they very much did not want to. How hard would it have been to give him this one thing? He described the ship getting together for regular... What the f... He described the ship getting together for regular orgies. When we all noped out of that aggressively, we were pu <laughs> we were prudes again. No. Don't you just hate it when those powerful DM NPCs get together and like take you on as their underlings and then you're and then they're just like 
And then it's like, okay, I guess it's orgy time. This is what normal people do, right? That alone. The ship getting together for regular orgies part alone is good enough for the, for the entire story. Uh, okay, okay, I'm going to have to continue reading, aren't I? This better be worth it. This video better get a ton of likes. God Ex Machina. Near the end, I had a moment where my character left the airship and wasn't planning on returning when the NPCs wanted her to. The DM decided to literally have the god of her faith descend from the celestial plane to tell her to go back to the ship and respect her NPCs and follow orders like a good little servant. Or they would curse her. Said god was a trickster god who favored discourse in shaking up the natural order of things. I told the DM that she thought she had encountered an imposter, and he got offended and whined that I needed to go back to the ship already. I tried over and over again to get him to improve. I sent him resources, I wrote feedback on unsatisfying scenes and things he could try differently. I called out the creepy stuff in and out of game. Boy was I getting sick of him bothering the rogue player at this point. He would constantly pretend to take what I was saying on board and then completely ignore it when it wasn't 100% praise for him and his amazing stories. In general, the DM just had no idea how to give us what we wanted. We weren't complicated as players, we wanted to have an adventure and face challenges that we would overcome without needing to be rescued. The problem was, the DM did not want to run a game. He wanted a captive audience for his amazing NPCs and their story. This all went on for a year or so. By this point, the game was basically a social trap. The DM was heavily involved in the club we played at, and at our regular social groups, he was known for tantrums. We all felt like quitting the game would basically cause an apocalyptic event. Not to mention, nobody was communicating about how they felt with the other players, so everyone had the feeling that leaving would basically be ruining everyone else's fun. It was geek social fallacies at work. That all changed one fateful night. I was at a party, chatting with an unrelated person. I was also quite drunk. You're in DM's game, right? He asked. I heard him saying it was going amazingly and you all were having a really good time. I'm pretty sure it was the alcohol that possessed me, but I kind of snapped right there and then and started ranting. For half an hour straight, I poured out every feeling about this game to my poor friend, who handled it like an absolute champ. By the time I was done, I knew I had to quit. It was affecting me way too much. No D&D is better than bad D&D. I told the other players my intentions first, and well, that's when we found out everyone had felt the exact same way, but had been too polite to bring it up. And collectively, as a group, we all agreed it was done. Then we agonized over a kind but firm message to the DM to tell him that we were done that would somehow minimize the chances of him having an absolute meltdown about it. That took about three days. Fortunately, the DM actually took us all quitting with a relative amount of grace, at least initially. He'd later get drunk and passive-aggressive and loudly talk about us all being bad players who hated fun, and how he gave us everything we wanted and we were greedy and wanted more. Personally, I'd sincerely hoped that he'd learn something from the experience. Like, maybe having four players drop you like a hot potato would give you a serious reality check. Nah, it was the players who were wrong. I stepped back from DM as a friend after this. The game was a strong factor, but he was getting insufferable outside of game as well. Lots of passive aggressiveness and creepiness towards women, and constantly excusing himself of any bad behavior with, But I'm mentally ill. There was also a weird period where I think he somehow expected us all to crawl back to him and beg him to start the game up again. Like, he would smugly tell Fighter Player that he was playing slash running five different games and having so much fun, and gosh, how many games are you playing? Right, oh, that's right, none. Joke's on him, though. Remember the friend I drunk ranted at for a disproportionate amount of time? Well, turns out he's a DM, and he was considering starting a story-heavy campaign. Just needed players. And oh my, we all had just become available. We've been playing in a story-rich 5e campaign for over a year now, and it is amazing. The new DM is a treasure, and we all adore and cherish him. The combat is hard, but not unfair. The NPCs are varied, interesting, and fun. And most importantly, there are no airships! Well, at least this story has a happy ending. That's a lot more than what most groups found on this subreddit have to say, sadly. And when it comes down to it, complaining to your players about how they are not having fun is as laughable as it is toxic. But seriously though, I know his mental illnesses haven't been touched upon that much in the story, but OP expands further on DM's mental illnesses in the comments. Uh, roll comment, I guess?
To hear him tell it, he had every diagnosis under the sun. At the very least, he was on the spectrum and had some depression issues. I couldn't really comment on the other claims. That said, intentionally doing bad things and then using a disability or mental health issue to deflect criticism so that you can continue to do those same bad things, then repeating the cycle every time people get upset with you, has nothing to do with any disability and everything to do with you as a person. Honestly, while I can talk on and on about this type of group and especially this dungeon master in particular, this video has gone on long enough. Many of you people in the comments have been asking for longer videos. These videos do take a lot more work and effort, but I'm very happy to make them. If you enjoyed how long this video was and also enjoyed the content of the video, please leave me a like and let me know in the comments that this is the type of length and quality that you want to see more of. And if you haven't already and want to see more of my videos, then definitely do subscribe to the channel. Till next time.